In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the history of the DX cluster. Most people know the DX cluster by websites that look like this. But where did it start? Cars were a little different back then, and packet radio was first introduced into amateur radio in 1978 through research done by the Montreal Amateur Radio Club. This was followed by the creation of the first TNC, or terminal node controller, designed by Doug Lockhart, VE7APU, of the Vancouver Amateur Digital Communications Group. This was followed very quickly by Tapper, the Tucson Amateur Packet Radio with the creation of the TNC-1 in 1982, and then the TNC-2 in 1984 and 85. Packet Radio Revolution Ignited sold over a thousand TNC-2 kits. The TNC-2 was what was needed to make this mode good for the masses and not just the experimenters. From there it went very quickly from two or three operators in any given city to thousands of radio operators, and manufacturers selling TNCs of all shapes and sizes turned to the late 80s and more and more software for the TNCs became available. Emergency communications networks were set up, chat bridges, bulletin board services, as well as the DX cluster. Dick Newell, AK1A, during the late 1980s developed software called Packet Cluster, which became very popular and an exciting way for ham radio operators interested in DXing to exchange DX related information. Many cities now have DX spotting nodes and networks or HF operators connected to their local DX cluster in order to receive reports on the latest DX. These type of packets came about from those interested in chasing DX. Many amateurs like to frequent the HF bands looking for that rare international operator to contact. A DX cluster allows many HF operators to be connected over the packet radio at the same time by still operating on the HF band and hunting for that elusive DX. When someone finds a station they send a packet message on the DX cluster which then sends the information to all the packet operators using the DX cluster. In this way you have several stations monitoring the band looking for that DX. Often an amateur will spot a DX station and then distribute the DX report almost instantly. The DX cluster allows everyone to operate many more hard to find DX stations in one evening than was possible with just oneself. Some amateurs have been known to attain enough contacts to qualify for DXCC in a matter of weeks. There is also a good chance of a pileup on a particular DX contact due to all the people that are on the DX cluster. That was yesterday. And yesterday we had to connect to a TNC or the DX cluster or the other option we had was a BBS service or a Telnet service both of which required a phone line and a modem. Today we have the internet, which has quite a few websites dedicated to DX spotting, including DX Watch, as well as DX Summit, unless we not forget DX Fun, and even eHam has a spotter page. DX apps for your phone are also all the rage for Android phones, NKC Cluster, and Ham Radio DX Cluster, as well as DX Fun Cluster. And for Apple, there is DX Spot and DX Macrolis and DX Cluster for the iPhone. We can also find DX spotting in logging software like Ham Radio Deluxe and DX Stream. So has the DX cluster changed things in the last 35 years? Absolutely. That elusive contact isn't as elusive as you thought. Get on HF, connect with the DX cluster, and have some fun. Seven threes and good DX from N9LVS.